Ooh, hey everybody, welcome back. Ooh. <laughs> God bless. Um, we're going back down the yellow brick road because we're going to Oz, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this um today's session is gonna be called Lions, Tigers, and Bears O Line. And in this session, we're gonna be talking about programmatic planning. Right, so programmatic planning, just to break it down, is the programs that support your organizations, the programs that support your business, because businesses, regular for-profit businesses can have programs. Those are the courses that you sell. Those are considered programs. Nonprofits, we just call them programs, right? Mm -hmm. we call them courses, right? Mm -hmm. Digital or otherwise. So we're gonna be talking about poor programmatic planning um, and how that you need to stay on the yellow brick road with that, right? To get to where you want to go to. Because trust me, there are lots of shiny objects over here. So if this is your first time, um, <laughs> if this is your first time catching us, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TBA Consulting Group, where I help change agents to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles that they desire while impacting their communities. All right, y'all. And I'm Ty Boone. I'm owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And Tracy, now that you say it, trying to help them stay on the yellow brick road, girl, because that's where the gold is. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what that is. Remember, right. Yeah. Programs solve problems. No matter yes. you know what kind of business you're in. Tracy said, if you've got a product or you've got a coaching program or whatever, it's the whole purpose of it is to solve a problem, mm -hmm. right? So you're, you're understanding that once you're on this yellow brick road, the goal is to solve the problem, to solve mm -hmm. a problem of your client or whatever. And like our last session, sometimes you have these things that kind of veer you off path. And when that happens, sometimes you get unhappy clients because they're looking like, look, my problem has not been solved. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but understanding where you are, and what that process is to solve the problem and working your way towards solving that problem, no matter what the distractions look like. So you have to ignore them mm -hmm. and follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Right. So when we're planning programs, because I've done pro programs for education, I've done programs in my own business, too many of them, but I've done... <laughs> <laughs> I've done programs. It's okay. Me too. <laughs> I know, right? I, that's why I said too many of them because we're in the same boat when it comes to that. Um, and programs for nonprofits and other institutions, right? Um, the problem is, again, in the planning, not really taking the time to plan out what the expected outcomes with are. So when you're planning any type of program, you don't plan the program from beginning to end. You plan the program from end to beginning. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds strange, but you have to plan the program based on the expected outcomes. So that's the first thing you want to, what problem am I solving? And how is that problem going to be solved? What's, what transformative actions are going to happen because of this program? What, do I, what are they going to learn? What is going to happen with them? Are they going to make more money? Are they going to, whatever it is. You that's where you need to be planning from is the end, and then you come back to the beginning. So if I want them to be able to um let's say learn how to read, right? Um, I first so that's the expected. I want them to be these kids are in the second grade, they're reading on a first grade level. By the end of this program, I at least need them to be reading on a second grade level, an advanced second grade level. Right. So then now I need to go back and figure out what the problems are. What do I need to teach? First of all, what, what why are they reading on the second grade level? And then I need to then from that assessment, I'll figure out what it is that I need to teach along the way to get them to where they need to be in the end. Mm -hmm. Right. So when we talk about programmatic planning issues, that is where I find a lot of the programmatic planning issues come in. And then we watch what other people are putting up, are putting out and we're like, oh, we could put that piece in and we can put this piece in it. Oh, my God, that would be great. And that would be great. But does it get to your expected outcome? It may get to their expected outcome, right. but it may not necessarily be the right thing for your clientele and the people who you're trying to transform. Mm -hmm. Like you said, your expected outcome. Right? I think about mm -hmm. traveling with my boys. You know, Alec mm -hmm. is every 
30 minutes, he has to use the bathroom. Right? Really? So, oh, wow. <laughs> for him, and it's, you know, it's, and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he's just, he, he doesn't want to just sightsee and look at the road. He wants mm-hmm. to stop because there's walk something around. here. Like there's an exit. And I mm-hmm. think that if we stop, I can get out of the car and I can look around and I can do everything. You know, with him being who he is, I know that my end goal is to get to wherever I'm trying to go. But because mm-hmm. he is the person that I'm working with, I may have to stop five times. Is that why it took you so long to get to your goal last week? Yes. Because <laughs> when I texted you and you were time. like, I'm still on my way. I was like, what? That's exactly <laughs> why it took me that. Because he wants to, st- and he'll make it up. He'll say, hey, I got to use that. But he really doesn't. He wants mm-hmm. to get out and he wants to walk around. But he's a little dude, you know, he wants to stretch his legs and it, every few minutes. I can take a trip with my daughter and my son and we can ride 12 hours. And it is, it is cool. <laughs> but understanding what the problem is you know the the problem (laughs) is that he that's how he is that's how he operates that's how he operates and if i'm gonna work with him i know that in order for us to reach our destination there's gonna have to be places along the road that where i can stop so i can't take the country roads with him (laughs) i have to go you know it's because i have to look at the cows (laughs) (laughs) i can leave them at home Yes, and, and he loves to look at the cows and the horses. He's looking. I'm like, I'm not about to pull over to this pasture for you to use the bathroom. So we're going to take the, the interstate so that, <laughs> so that there's an exit in a few miles and we can get off and we can do this thing, right? Mm-hmm. It, the same thing when you're planning your programs and you're working with your clients, you have to understand who you're working with. Now, if you don't want to work with Alec, because I know that he's going to stop 15 times, I have to know, well, he's not the kind of person that I need to work with because I don't want to stop. Or like, if you're going to work with him, you know, you need to leave two hours early. Right. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to be on time. Right. And we talked about that in the last session. In a timely fashion, mm-hmm. reaching my goal in a timely manner, getting to where I needed to get to by 10 o'clock instead of right. 11 30. I need to leave at eight o'clock, even though it takes 45 <laughs> minutes to get there. <laughs> because, because I'm going to have to stop multiple times with right. this particular person. Mm-hmm. And that's where it comes in knowing who your um who your market, your target audience is, right? Because if we use Alec as your target audience, we already knew that Alec is a type of kid who needs to stop multiple times, right? So we can go back and equate that to the same educational system that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Maybe these kids are not read, reading at um, second grade level because they have ADHD. Mm-hmm. So now the program that you create is not just going to be a regular reading program. It's going to be a reading program that has some special services in there to address the issue that's preventing them from reading. So that's why you have to have these assessments and a lot of people don't have the assessments. And if you're having a, a regular business, you may not want to do an assessment like a nonprofit would do. A nonprofit would do a different type of assessment. So there are differences, right? But yours could be simply going on to social media. If you have a lot of people on your page who are in your target audience and asking questions, mm-hmm. right? Polling them to see what their mindsets are around a specific topic. Um, and how they need that topic to be delivered to them before you go and create a, pro- a product. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, whether you're for profit or nonprofit, I find that we tend to create things from our comfort zone, from our interests, and mm-hmm. not the interests of the consumer. Mm-hmm. And doing the research and knowing what's there. So even though we're on the yellow brick road and we tell you to have tunnel vision and stay focused, you still have mm-hmm. to know what's on the road, right? Right. Because there could be a reason. That's why we use Waze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a resource there that you mm-hmm. that you weren't aware of, right? right. That you could use to, to do this. You know, I, I talk to people about, you know, when they're writing grants and the, the fastest way to get rejected is you bring in something that's old, right? Or something that's not used anymore. You're going to use this tool for your program. And this tool was outdated in 1986. Oh my! You haven't been keeping up with the trends, with the times, you don't know yeah. what's going on in the pro, you know what they're doing in the field. But if you were to, if you're on the road, the right road to solving mm-hmm. the problem, you could see that there are other resources. You talk about, you know, going to Facebook and getting to this group and, and, and 
chatting yeah. around and seeing what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what kind of resources that you need in order to solve the problem that you're trying, how many stops you have to make along the way. Right. Because sometimes even like we can even equate it to ourselves. When we do Clubhouse twice a week, in most cases, we get our content about what we're going to be talking about from Facebook, right? Yeah. We kind of mill around and see yeah. what questions people are asking. And then we address those questions in mm -hmm. our clubhouse, right? So <laughs> we're doing market research. That's just that's kind it. of how it's done. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, the, and and actually, you know, that's a, 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 a ingredient into solving somebody's problem. So mm -hmm. even though sometimes we're looking at it and we're like, oh my gosh, this is horrible like let us <laughs> let us let us talk about this and see what in the world's going on yeah. that's somebody's problem though if mm -hmm. somebody somebody is seeing that you know something that we already have knowledge of as a problem for them mm -hmm. so if we were to come on and we address this problem or if we were to create a program around that problem that they talked about there are more people where that came from if we just right. saw one person there 20,000 somewhere who, who were just afraid to post it on Facebook. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, but we're solving somebody's problem and understanding where, where that audience is. If if that's an audience that you want to work with, what are their needs? Even understanding that question, that level of questioning mm -hmm. helps you to understand what that particular audience needs are and if you're going to be able to relate to and work with them. Right, exactly. So that is Lions, Tigers, and Bears. Oh, my, guys. Uh, so make sure you watch the video before this. Again, if you have not, that's called Obstacles to Avoid. And then stay tuned for We're Melting, Melting, Melting. <laughs> I love that. I, I, I love that. That's our favorite line, right? You got it. Yeah, I just love that line. All right, guys. See you back in the next one. Bye-bye.